curious at beauty, at leaf and blossom, at grief and pleasure, sun and shadow. And it is not darkness that unites us, not the cold distance of space, but the offering of water. Each drop of rain, each rivulet, each pulse, each vein. Oh, second moon, we too are made of water, of vast and beckoning seas. We too are made of wonders, of great and ordinary loves, of small and visible worlds, of a need to call out through the dark. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and lift off. Lift off of Falcon Heavy with Europa Clipper, unveiling the mysteries of an enormous ocean lurking beneath the icy crust of Jupiter's moon Europa. Rocket beginning to roll. Europa Clipper is a NASA mission dedicated to studying Europa, especially to understand the habitability of Europa. We're pretty sure that there's a liquid ocean inside Europa beneath an ice shell that's anywhere from 10 to 50 kilometers thick. It is, in the view of some, the most likely place to find extant life. Think about the black smokers, the subsea floor life on Earth, if there's something like that on the floor of Europa, then that could really be teeming with life. And then, what does that mean for life elsewhere in our galaxy? Via the video, we can see that Clipper has successfully separated. Please say goodbye to Clipper on its way to Europa. So I am a planetary scientist, mainly a planetary geologist, and I've worked on many spacecraft missions. I sometimes describe myself as a mission junkie. One mission I started working on right out of graduate school was the Galileo mission at Jupiter. Galileo mission showed that there's probably a subsurface ocean inside Europa, which is very interesting for habitability. Now with Europa Clipper, we're gonna go back with a very large uh, data return capability. Europa is one of four of the Galilean satellites discovered by Galileo himself back in 1610. Three of these satellites have a very interesting orbital configuration around Jupiter, and this creates forced eccentricity of the orbits. And that means as you go around mass of Jupiter, their, their shapes change. They, they swell and contract in shape, and this produces a tremendous amount of tidal heating. So Europa Clipper isn't formally looking for life. It's trying to understand Europa's habitability. So we want to know, is it currently active? So on Europa Clipper, there's a number of instruments, many instruments, but the one that I work on is the Reason radar system. And the waves are so long, they can go into the subsurface and bounce off of things there. So for example, if there's layering in the subsurface, different density layers, or if there's water, like if you had kind of a reservoir of water sitting in the upper crust, those are all things that the radar wave will reflect off of. What we really want to learn for Europa is how the Europa system works. For example, what is the interior structure? Where is the ocean? Does the ocean interact with minerals or you know things that could be food for life, essentially? We don't really know for sure if there are plumes coming off that could bring some of this water up. I'm involved with ICE, which stands for Europa Imaging System. This is a very innovative camera design we need the wide-angle camera to cover a large area and to map stereo along a swath. Then we have a narrow-angle camera. It can collect enough signal while whizzing over the surface very fast to take very high-resolution images. And so we designed a new camera that we can run in either mode. When we first arrive at Europa, 
I think all of us are just gonna be like immediately basically sitting there waiting to see what the first radargram is that we get back. There's just so many unknowns, so for me it's really like a sense of adventure going and seeing this new place that we, we really don't know very much about. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Alfred. What have you got that's fantastic? Well. Here at the University of Arizona, uh, Sarah Sutton is working with me on ICE in her digital train model production lab. With the Europa images from ICE. In my lab, which is a photogrammetry lab, we make stereo models, digital stereo models of topography of planetary surfaces. Yep, this will be great data. We want to find future landing sites too. So when we take stereo images, which we will be doing with ICE, you can look at them in 3D in a special monitor, and it's like you're there. And look at surprising terrains, which I'm sure we'll see. I am interested as a geologist in looking for if we can observe active processes on the surface during our mission. What we already know we will see are like icy ridges, icy bands, plates that look a lot like icebergs and ice plates on Earth, chaos regions, like where it looks really broken up. I think getting at those questions is going to be really fascinating. Exploration itself it has great value. It's, it's fundamental research. We can't predict what in the future this will lead to, but we can look back and fundamental research has led to all of the advancements of the 20, 20th and 21st centuries. The sense of adventure uh, really does drive me to do this spacecraft mission work. There's really this sense that we could go there and see something totally weird. For me, that's really the motivation to keep doing it. We are creatures of constant awe. Another aspect of this is appreciating life on Earth. There are mysteries below our sky. Life is very rare, especially advanced life like ours. So it makes us appreciate and hopefully do a better job of managing Spaceship Earth. And it is not darkness that unites us.